Well, a city press expose released on Sunday implicated several South African retailers in the meat scandal. The report said that tests show that the companies had stocked incorrectly labeled meat products on their shelves. And joining us now to discuss the consumer reactions to the scandal is Renal Berger. She's head of the Food Safety Initiative at the Consumer Goods Council of South Africa. Renal, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Well, let's take a look at the kind of reaction that you're, you're getting from the consumer side of things, because uh, yesterday, we had Lindsay chatting to a representative from Woolworths and uh, you know after the conversation he said to me that's exactly one of the re oh it's a good reason to be vegetarian I said <laughs> that uh, you know it hasn't triggered enough of, con of a concern for me to turn me vegetarian yeah. just yet yeah. what kind of uh, pushback have you seen from consumers so far we haven't experienced any pushback from consumers really and and from our ombud office the news is that is no complaints or no inquiries about it as well which is um, which is good. I think the consumers maintain the the confidence within the um, retailers and mm -hmm. the products that I purchased. I can I can uh, now not speak not as a vegetarian but as somebody who uh, uh, buys uh, uh, products every single day. Renault and and Alicia. I mean, if we have somebody like Renault Burger, for example, on CNBC Africa, we have vetted her. We know what that product is. We know that she comes from. And let me read this now. Um, the CG uh, CGCSA, and she's the head of food safety initiative at that organisation. We know that she doesn't have a stupidity uh, DNA in, inside her. So we've done our job and I think the supermarkets should do exactly the same. Uh, Woolworth's share price last year was one of the best performing on the JSC. ShopRite checkers, we know about the story there, they're making billions and they should take the responsibility, not say, oh, the suppliers misled us. And I really think they should be prosecuted and I really think they should be fined. And um, Leslie, just to put it into perspective and, and the, the report into context, you must remember we are busy with the retailers. We voluntarily approached the NCC's office to um, to help them with the investigation, not only to share results with them, but also to help them on the technical side and advisory side. And we really need to determine the severity of this before we can talk about fines or, or any any um, fines towards suppliers. It's important that we make sure of the facts. Currently, we're not sure of the facts. Yeah, so while we're getting clarity on that front, we've also got to examine what that recourse would be and who it would be to, because I've been reading that uh, while you've got some quarters calling for prosecution, criminal charges cannot be brought against a corporation. It would actually be uh, the people, the individuals who are in charge of labeling that would be prosecuted, fined, jailed. Is that correct? It is correct. I, the investigation will show who the, who the guilty parties are, and the guilty parties, um, once they determine the severity, the guilty parties will be, um, the correct action will be taken. Renel, one of the other things that I asked the Woolworths represent representative yesterday was that uh, I thought that maybe this was the tip of the iceberg. Okay, the, the research that's been done and the report has come from Stellenbosch University, which is uh, an august institution, and I can't uh, begin to believe that their findings are not correct. But I do think it might go further. And if the South African consumer does cause enough of, of a fuss, and you've suggested that they haven't yet, then perhaps it will go further. Do you think there is that potential? There's definitely that potential and I must tell you that we got involved with our members in, in this con, um, investigation to ensure that what, what we um, seen in the test and the test that retailers did previously and are currently doing on their products really um, indicate and we are confident that it indicates the unavoidable cross-contamination due to the nature of the process. What is important however is that we make sure that those within the supply chain that intentionally add different species that we take corrective action and that we label those species so that consumers can make an informative decision. Mm -hmm. If we're looking at the case right now, I mean, uh, what you've said is you've got to look at ways to test products in quantity. Uh, let's take a look at some of the viable options that are being put on the table and, uh, you know, options that will be, impl uh, be able to be implemented mm -hmm. down the line by these retailers. Well, currently th what, what they are doing is they um, do third party audits by independent um, audit companies to verify compliance to regulations. They also have their own food safety um, and food quality technologies 
at facilities to, to check the specification or the, the product recipe against what is actually happening in the plant. And this report actually just prompts all of us to, to try and get a stricter, more best practice way of doing things, if it's possible to do it. And um, really to, and, and it's also a chance to educate consumers. Mm -hmm. Because and as you know, in the EU and the UK, they allow for a 1% DNA. We are talking here about min minute quantities of DNA. It's really like a, a grain of sand on a beach. It's, you Should might that not, not even see that it allowance with your not eyes. be made uh, here in South Africa as well? Why is it not? I can't speak on behalf of the Department of Health and or the Department of Agriculture. And as you know, the Department of Health is responsible for labeling regulations. Um, and if we don't, normally if we don't have regulations in South Africa, we do follow and we do advise our members to follow Codex Alimentaris, which is the global food safety standards. However, this is not a food safety issue, it's a labeling mm -hmm. issue. It can become a deceiving issue if the correct species aren't declared on, on packaging. Renelle, very finally, don't you think that the uh, products concerned, the products that have been identified should have been removed from the shelves by the retailers as they did in the United Kingdom, whether it's a grain of sand on the beach, where, whether it's a, a tiny minuscule amount of water buffalo or donkey in a beef burger, uh, the right thing to do is to take that product away, change your supplier and give the consumer confidence. It just seems to me it's been handled in the wrong way. And uh, I'm not having a go at the retailers, I'm just saying everyone seems to be very sanguine and relaxed about the whole thing. You must remember the, the, the samples that were drawn was drawn between last year, April and August. And furthermore, our members aren't um, different species that were found in, uh, there was minute quantities. So if it's a beef product, there might have been a little bit of chicken in the product. There wasn't all these different species that we're not used to see in our products, in, in, their, sample, uh, in their products. And if the Department of Health, who is responsible um, and their health the environmental health practitioners fought, or the National Consumer Commission fought, this is a food safety matter that would have immediately withdrawn this product from, from shelf.